The national lockdown of America incurs the wrath of conservatives, patriots, and Bill Maher? Why did this mayor order his city to take off the face mask just 24 hours after he'd made them mandatory? And finally, uh-oh, Donald Trump talks about a vaccine by the end of the year. But question, will Bill Gates approve? All of this and so much more tonight from the Editor's Desk. some point we have to open our country and people are going to be safe we've learned a lot we've learned about the tremendous contagion but we have no choice we have to we can't stay close as a country we're not going to have a country left hello again ladies and gentlemen michael mack coming to you once again from the offices of the remnant newspaper and deep into the lockdown now it's getting quite ridiculous i'm sure i'm not the only one who is sick and tired of it looks like donald trump got himself a haircut i wish i could do that as far as i'm concerned we're on day 50 of the lockdown of america's barbers and it's getting a little annoying i don't know friends i know i know it seems really bad but don't you just have a little bit of a feeling that things are changing the tide is changing there's a little bit of a change in the wind right now i don't think this is going to last much longer so let's just start with a question, because I know everybody's debating this. There's one question that to me seems like gets right to the heart of the issue of reopening America, and that's this. If opening our country is going to take the flat curve and just send it skyrocketing, skyrocketing upward, as Dr. Tony Fauci insists that it will, here's the question. Why in the world would Donald Trump go along with it? I mean, think about that for a second. He's got everything to lose, including, obviously, the White House come November. And this is a man who understands the political ramifications of mishandling this thing, right? I mean, he tanked his own booming U.S. economy because of the coronavirus. And now, after two months of learning what this is all about, he has the best intel in the world. He can see that economically the country absolutely can't handle this any longer. And he also knows that if opening the country is going to backfire, and it's going to send us back to February and March, then he's done in November. He's a one-termer. It's over. So again, why would he do this? And while we're asking questions, why does the map showing those states which are interested in lifting this crazy draconian lockdown, why does it look like a red state, blue state political map? Why is this so divided right along party lines? Why are these Democrats now, these pro-abortion Democrats, anti-Trump, never Trump, Trump-hating Democrats, why are they doubling down on the lockdown after the nation has learned so much about how to deal with this virus. Remember what they told us? The reason we had to be so careful is because this virus spreads very quickly and hospital systems are not going to be handling it if, we, if, if it happened too fast. That's why, so they said, it was much worse than a flu. And it, indeed it is an incredibly fast spreading contagious virus. But why now, after the states have learned how to handle this fast spreading virus all across the country, their hospital systems are holding up, why are they locking down the country? Why do we have the mayor of Chicago? Did you see this? Oh, yeah, she's terrifying. Let's throw it up there for a sec. Take a look at this. We will shut you down. We will cite you. And if we need to, we will arrest you and we will take you to jail. Settle down, dude. Who do you think you are, Michelle Obama? Unbelievable. You know, Chicago is shooting itself to death, the murder capital of the world, and she's going to crack down on First Holy Communion parties that have more than 10 people. What in the world, friends? How much more of this are we going to take? Especially now when we see the numbers going in the right direction. A lot of old people, a lot of nursing homes are still having trouble. We understand that. And, of course, I think they're doing great work now. The Trump administration is focusing on nursing homes, as they should have from the beginning. Focus on those areas, on those age groups that are going to be most adversely affected by this. Protect them. Just think. If we had put all the money and resources that we've done so far the past two months, stimulus packages and everything else, all that money into the defense of the most vulnerable, the nursing homes, the older folks in this country. Just think what would have happened. Send everybody else to work and put trillions of dollars into keeping the elderly alive. I'll tell you what, even New York's hospital system, as taxed as it was, didn't fail. And that's the reality. You know, they sent the, sh the hospital ship back. The last COVID-19 patients have now left, as of this week, they've left the Javits Center in New York. Signs of progress in the city. The final patients at the Javits Center Field Hospital were finally discharged today, making a triumphant departure to the sound of applause 
and bagpipes. The field hospital now closing after treating more than a thousand patients. That's just great to see, you know? And yet still, like a chatty Kathy doll, Dr. Fauci is still out there saying, we can't shake hands ever again. We'll never be able to go to football games for at least another 18 months. <laughs> Why 18 months, doctor? Why not 25 months? That's 60 months. Why? There's arbitrary 18 months you've all agreed on. And how do you know we can never shake hands again? This is Orwellian terror speech. You know, this is mind control. This is brainwashing, friends. What's going on here? And this increasingly unhinged Bill Gates, God help us, God protect us from this guy. He says we can't go back to normal until he vaccinates the entire world. I kid you not. Check this out really understanding the safety at gigantic scale across all age ranges, you know, pregnant, male, female, undernourished, uh, existing comorbidities. It's very, very hard. And that actual decision of, okay, let's go and give this vaccine to the entire world, uh, governments will have to be involved. The whole world. And what is that? Seven billion people? <laughs> That's going to take a while. <laughs> no. No wonder they got to wait 18, how about 18 years to get 7 billion people vaccinated? People aren't interested, Bill. They don't want to be vaccinated. Put your needles away and take your goodies and get the heck out of here because you're starting to scare us, guy. We're done with you. You know, and it's no wonder that D Donald Trump, now he's promising a vaccine by the end of the year. And some of you are, are you know, are, are concerned about that. Mm, not, not me, not so much. You see, because I think Trump is just knocking down another impossible metric set up by these guys to prolong the shutdown so that Gates and Soros and Pope Francis will have all the time in the world to work out their borderless green socialist utopia full of rainbows and unicorns, right? That's what they're doing. And Trump's like, you know what? I'm going to get you a vaccine by the end of the year. It's going to be tremendous. You know, it's the best vaccine anybody's ever seen. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Because nobody cares. Trump's never going to have a mandatory vaccination, but he's just doubling down on them again, just like he did with the ventilators. Vent I mean, we got more ventilators than we know what to do with, thanks to Trump, right? It's the way he works. I don't think you need to be so worried about the vaccination coming from Trump. So much of this has very little to do with the virus anymore, has everything to do with raw politics. Our buddy over in Rome, Pope Francis, he can hardly wait now to roll out his new global economy, which he planned, by the way. He had a big conference planned months before the pandemic landed. Next year will be an amazing, amazing event to create a new world economy that is fair, prosperous, and environmentally sustainable. I will come for the economy of Francesco because we need a new economy, a new vision, and the teachings of Pope Francis uh, in Laudato Si and in other teachings help to give us the pathway to a better world. Now I wonder how Pope Francis knew that the world was going to be interested in looking into a global economy months ago when he trotted this thing out with his buddy Jeff there. Kind of suspicious, isn't it? Yeah, how did he, how did he figure that out? And yet he did. Right now, everybody's been talking about this. It wasn't just the United States economy that got locked down, was it? It was a global economic lockdown. And there's Pope Francis, our friend in Rome, the biggest fanboy of the United Nations on the planet. He's planning a new global economy. You see, they're overplaying their hands. And it's so blatant now what they're doing that even, you don't have to be like a conservative, you know, tinfoil hat, you know, traditional Catholic to figure out what's going on. Even liberal apostates such as Bill Maher get it full well what's going on. Even hospital acquired infections may very well kill more than coronavirus. 99,000 of them last year. 50,000 die of nephritis every year. And I don't even know what that is. 22 million Americans have filed for unemployment, and many will lose their health insurance. Studies show lacking health insurance kills people. But it doesn't lead to pictures like this, and it doesn't happen all at once. We need the news to calm down and treat us like adults. Trump calls you fake news. Don't make him be right. So I completely agree with Bill Maher, something I never thought I would say. <laughs> never thought I would say. But you look at this stuff, it's just crazy. I mean, how about we have a little show of hands, you know? How many of you want to get serious about this con job? Because this is a con job. This is a hoax, you know? It's a political hoax. 
Or do you prefer, rather than getting serious, would you prefer to spend the next couple of years in your basement waiting for Bill Gates to get it together and come out and vaccinate you and the misses and the kids? These guys are so nuts, they want to shut down everything because they want to restart up everything. They want to take control of everything, and that's where that's their fatal flaw. They want to shut down everything from football. What are you going to do when you can't go see your, your Green Bay Packers or your Vikings or your Kansas City Chiefs next fall? That's what they want. And you mothers and fathers out there trying to trying to make a living, keep your houses, and keep your kids fed. Well, you're not your kids are not going to be allowed to go back to school either if these guys get the get their way. Are you comfortable with that? And what are we supposed to do? We're just supposed to mask up, shut up, and obey because these characters know best. I mean, they don't even know if they're coming or going when it comes to the coffee filters, which is like the new star of David, by the way. Everybody who dutifully wears their little mask is showing compliance with Big Brother, right? That's what that's all about. They don't even know if they're coming or going, if we should wear these things or not. Remember, first they told us not to wear them because we'll touch our faces, and, and we will, I suppose. I wore one the other day when I had to go into one of these places that said, you cannot go any farther unless you put your mask on. So I put the thing on. I thought I was going to gag. I mean, I, I was hyperventilating. I had glasses on. They were fogging up, and it was crazy. You know, so I don't doubt that somebody like me putting the thing on carefully every day and wearing it in my car with virus-infested infected fingers probably going to do a lot of damage. So originally, they were right. Don't worry about it, people. The masks are for the professional medical people, not for you. Don't wear the mask. And now, of course, they're not so sure about the masks. In Oklahoma City, for example, last week... <laughs> can't make this stuff up the mayor down there basing himself on the experts once again he made an emergency declaration that masks must be worn in oklahoma city in public 24 7 whenever you're outside you gotta wear your mask and then 24 hours later he walks that back why because some teenagers started behaving like little masked bandits and freaked out the checkout girls at Walmart. You know, they got the masks on, they're playing Antifa or whatever they're doing, saying mean things, and people got ma got scared. So now the, the, the mayor, he panics, and he comes flying out there from the city hall. Everybody, take off your mask. Holy cow, no, we made a mistake. Remove your mask, remove your mask. That was not a good... P Come on, friends. Look at this nonsense. It's insane. These are the experts basing their, their orders on science. <laughs> Here's a question for the experts in Oklahoma. Which part of this thing was based on medical science? That we should wear it or that we should not wear it? Because those are a tiny bit mutually exclusive, don't you think? You know? You just, again, I can't believe people are falling for this. This is chaos. It's idiocracy. It's insanity. And then there's this moron out in California he cares about saving the lives so much that he decided to shut down California's beaches, even though all the doctors and the experts in that case out there were saying, wait a minute, the beaches are the healthiest place to be. Governor Gavin says, nope, <laughs> close the beaches. And while you're at it, he says, you can't have any protests of my orders. Well, ya wohl, Herr Commandant. You know, what is this, 1939 Munich? I would argue no, in fact, it's not, because those particular losers in Germany had a plan to take over the world, all right, but it involves something just a little more than great hair product and that sign language lady that follows Gavin around all the time. We're starting to appropriately practice uh, uh, social distancing. And speaking of experts, I think we've got to brace ourselves for some more expert opinion because when our churches open up for public masses, think that's going to happen anytime soon? No. I don't either. But it, when it does... I think that our gifted shepherds are going to ban communion on the tongue. So we need a brace for this. And they're going to ban communion on the tongue because, well, obviously, science tells us that communion in the hand is going to save lives. So we're going to have to have communion in the hand only when they get back from hiding. I don't know where they are. Under their, under their Episcopal beds, they're still hiding from the virus. You know, they're in hazmat suits, I guess. I haven't seen those guys in a long time. So once they come out from hiding, they're going to tell us we have communion in the hand only. And this is just going to be funny. It's going to be funny because the experts have spent months telling us what. I'm talking about medical experts. What have they been telling us? What's the one thing we all got through our, our thick heads over the past month? Two months. Don't touch your face. Do not touch your face. Your hands are the enemy. You got Trump. You got Dr. Briggs. You got Dr. Fauci telling us to wash our hands constantly. Wash your hands every day, 60, 70 times a day, right? And now our feckless shepherds are going to instruct millions of us 
to carefully use our hands to place the deadly virus in our mouths every Sunday morning until just about every one of us who's still listening to these cats is going to need one of Andy's ventilators. That's where this is going. Sheer genius, your excellencies. Trot it on out. You never fail to impress, guys. You just, everywhere you look right now, something stupider is going on. Someone stupider is speaking, which is why I think this can't go on. This is not that the wheels are coming off this Wuhan bat show. You know, it's, it's coming off. Meanwhile, we're all scrapping over with each other now <laughs> over whether or not the CDC cut the number of COVID deaths from 60,000 to 37,000. I understand there's this big controversy because it wasn't, you got to look at all the fine print and all that. It's not our, our fault that the CDC suddenly changed its number. It is interesting conversation fodder though, isn't it? Why did the numbers suddenly get cut in half to a number, by the way, that would be roughly half of the number of deaths from the flu in the 2017-18 season, but, but who's counting? But what we're now supposed to do is we're supposed to count the deaths. We're going to fight over the number of deaths. Count the deaths because if more die, you win. If less die, I win. You know, we need more deaths. This is science. Bring out your dead. We need more deaths in order to make our case. I'm not dead. What? Nothing. Here's your nine puts. I'm not dead. Isn't there something you can do? I feel happy. I feel happy. Oh, thanks very much. See you Thursday. Right. He was like, well, yeah, but people are dying. They really are dying. It's not just a Monty Python thing. They really are dying. We must shut down the country. Come on. We must. No, actually, sweetheart, we mustn't. And the only reason that you're saying that we must shut down the country is because people on TV told you to think that and then you went out and said it because they told you to don't you understand you've been manipulated these aren't your own original thoughts you didn't wake up one day and say man alive i am afraid of the coronavirus <laughs> they spent months prepping you here it comes it's coming from china it's in the bats it's coming across the sea oh it landed in california it's in new york here it comes freaking everybody out what else is this other than terrorizing a people, getting them so afraid they can't do anything. Why? Because when you're afraid, you are controllable. And they knew it. And that's what they're doing. We mustn't shut down the country, friends. And how do I know this? How do I know that you didn't come up with that? Because two years ago, the director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Dr. Robert Redfield, reported what? That 80,000 Americans had died of the flu. 80,000 dead. Didn't you care about them? There was no economic shutdown then. Why not? No mandatory masks. No six feet apart in the Walmart. Heck, we even had enough toilet paper. Amazing, isn't it? Because nobody on CNN told us there was a run on toilet paper. So we didn't have to run out and buy yeah, suburbans full of toilet paper to get through the disaster. You see, we haven't been thinking on our own for two months. We've been in our basement being programmed, being told what to think, and most importantly, what to fear. They played us, and we fell for it. And people say, yeah, you're wrong. You're dead wrong. You know, COVID spreads so fast. It's a different kind of virus. Look how many cases there are. Yes, it's a nasty virus. No, none of us want to get the virus. Yes, it spreads quickly, which is why you should be so happy to know that it has an incredibly low death rate. Even the insufferable Bill Gates cannot drag himself to get that death rate much higher than 1%. Here's Bill again. What, how many people do you think it kills percentage-wise? The, because you don't see all the cases, uh, you know, you get the denominator wrong, it's clearly, you know, 1%, 1.2%. And that's Bill. That's Bill Gates, who wants 18 months and vaccinations for $7 billion. If we do a little work down here in the real world, we're going to find out that an extensive antibody study in Santa Clara County in California revealed that the coronavirus there in California has a fatality rate between 0.09% and 0.14%, friends. <laughs> that's really, really, really low. In Massachusetts, the death rate, 0 0.08%. Even our buddy, Governor Andy Cuomo, is admitting now that in New York, the death rate is at 0.5%. Can 
yeah, you got millions of people have had it. Many who didn't even know they had it. All the more so then, because there are millions of cases, we need to open our economy up right now. Strike that. We need to open it up yesterday in order to save lives. Many more lives than are being claimed by this horrible disease. So now what are you going to say? I know what you're going to say. Because we hear it every single day on CNN. Yeah, but the second wave. Dr. Fauci tells us there's a second wave coming. The second wave is going to be even worse than the first wave. See, see Doc, Dr. Fauci is losing the argument. The country is going to the beach. The country is going to the parks. They're done with this little creep. And you know what? Maybe there is going to be a second wave. And so the death rate being so low is once again, very good news, Dr. Fauci. We got great news for you. We handled the first wave. We're going to handle the second wave. Only we're going to handle it better this time because the Trump administration has quadrupled down on everything. We could build Trump towers out of ventilators at this point. We've got so many, you see? So we are more prepared for the second wave than we ever were for the first one. You know, there's probably going to be a third one. Who knows? That's just not scary anymore, Dr. Fauci. You've got a great chance, friends, if you get this, God forbid, of surviving. You want to know how good your chances are of surviving COVID if you get this virus? WebMD.com reports an overall COVID-19 recovery rate between... <laughs> you have to look this up because you're going to think I'm making it up. The recovery rate is between 97% and 99.75%. That's WebMD, friends. That's not Tucker Carlson. That's not the remnant. It's not Rush Limbaugh. It's the very neutral, very professional, very medical, very expert WebMD. So think about that. We have got 30 million Americans out of work right now over a disease with a 98% chance of recovery. What's going on here? We are now destroying our economy over a virus, which during China's peak with the COVID problem, during the peak in China, was only the 49th leading cause of death. <laughs> the 49th. Why are 30 million of us out of work over something that's less likely to kill us than esophageal cancer, for example, which is, I think, 48. <laughs> you know anybody that has esophageal cancer? Yeah. Do you know anybody? Exactly, yeah. This is, this, is, this is complete theater now. We know it because we can look back and we can see how we got here. It's theater. It's politics. It's a sham. One of our local, you talk about resisting any of this stuff. You can't even ask questions, which should really be the dead giveaway. When you can't ask questions anymore in a free country, you know something's wrong. You know to be frightened. And you should be more afraid of that than you should be of this virus. When you can't ask questions, when they're gagging people, they're, not, they're taking your post out off Facebook. Doctors, excellent medical men, people who are on the front line are saying things. They're asking questions. And what do they do? They get pulled off YouTube. They get silenced. Be afraid of that, friends. You want to be afraid of something, be afraid of that. So you can't ask these questions. One of our, our local weathermen, he tweeted this out against those who were at the Minnesota, you know, get, opened up Minnesota rally last week. He said those rallies, those protests are made up of white, nationalist, Nazi sympathizing, gun fetishist miscreants. <laughs> you got that? So this is now wanting to just live a normal life has become a, an argument, a tenant of a conservative position, evidently. If you want to go back to work, you're a nationalist. You're a white nationalist. You're a Nazi sympathizer. You want your kids to go back to school. Now you're a problem. You're a miscreant. <laughs> Orwell couldn't make this stuff up. And here's the thing. I'm going to close on this, friends. I think it's, we're all beginning to sense that, this, that the, again, the, the tide is changing. The, the, the winds are changing because this thing is backfiring. That weather guy that I just mentioned, he got fired. And he's a rather prominent married gay man. He got fired from the station. Why? Because it's not a conservative issue or it shouldn't be. It's just an American issue to want to live our lives and have our country back. And the station, the news station for which that man works, knew it. <laughs> There were too many of us out in the street last Sunday, too many Minnesotans that have had enough, you know, and thanks to those protests, thanks to those brave people who went out there, protested this nonsense, guess what? 90% of our workforce here in Minnesota is going back to work this week. 
<laughs> the wheels are coming off this thing. Thanks be to God. And why? It's because Minnesotans, just like millions of Americans all across this country, they just don't cotton to the idea that their country is going to be handed over <laughs> to a new world order modeled after communist China. Because that's what they want. That's what Gates wants. That's what Francis wants. Soros, all these guys. That's what they want. And they're not going to get it. And the resistance against, the resistance against these guys, against this initiative, is, it's not futile. It's contagious. I saw it. It was there last week. We're all seeing it all across the country. And if this country opens, we're going to reelect Donald Trump, and then we're going to undermine the entire Green New Deal, sustainable development, population controlling, vaccinating, gobbledygook agenda. It's over. We have four more years to work against it with now the knowledge and the experience of what they really want. And what they really want is to shut us down, shut this country down, shut our voice down. That's what they want. Totalitarian green regime. And they're getting desperate. Just this week, a group of so-called conservative Republicans headed up by this Conway guy. I, mean, I like Kellyanne Conway, but her husband, oh my gosh, the guy really needs to take a chill, chill pill. And he, you know, he hates Donald Trump. They, they released this video called Morning in America, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, which confirms, friends, what we've been saying all along, that this thing is all about making Donald Trump the, you know, the scapegoat. He's going to become a one-term president because everything that's gone wrong is going to be his fault. And we're going to see this all summer long. Take a look at this video. There's morning in America. Today, more than 60,000 Americans have died from a deadly virus Donald Trump ignored. With the economy in shambles, more than 26 million Americans are out of work. The worst economy in decades. Trump bailed out Wall Street, but not Main Street. This afternoon, millions of Americans will apply for unemployment. And with their savings run out, many are giving up hope. Millions worry that a loved one won't survive COVID-19. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. That the last part of that video, that was part of my own video from last Sunday's open Minnesota rally. It uh, kind of blew away uh, Mr. Conway's video. And I want to apologize. I'm sorry, but uh, uh, you know that it just sort of happens sometimes around here. Things go wrong. But it, it really, to me, that's exactly what what happened. I, I have no idea where this video came from or what these people are talking about because we've all seen the rallies all across this country, and these open up our state rallies, open up our country rallies. What do they look like? They look like Trump rallies. I've never seen so many Trump flags at, uh, as we're out in front of our capital here in Minnesota uh, last Sunday. So millions, what it, what it means, obviously, is that regular blue-collar Americans have had enough of this. And they're looking to Donald Trump. And that's why the Gates and the Fauci's and everybody else are looking so frantic lately. But it's not just us. It's doctors, nurses, experts, frontline workers all across America are speaking out. And if you ever want a reason to be feeling kind of patriotic, that's it. Because we can still speak out in this country, at least for the moment. <laughs> and I think if we get Donald Trump in, in, in pre to be in office again, we might even be able to speak out for, for a number of years still. That's why it's so important for this guy to get elected. America is not Italy. America is not Spain. You know what? Lots of Americans still go to church, for example. We have the strongest traditional Catholic movement in the world here in America. Our president is one of the few world leaders still willing to acknowledge our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as he did memorably last year. For Christians, this is a holy season, the celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have such a strong pro-life movement in this country that many of our politicians cannot get elected if they don't stand with, with the unborn. We have the strongest homeschool lobby in the world, the strongest gun lobby, which doesn't mean shoot them up stuff. What it means is that we can take care of ourselves, that we're independent. We don't need 
Bill Gates, Pope Francis, or the Easter Bunny to keep us safe. You see? And this is contagious, what's happened over the past four years in this country. America's got a lot of problems, don't get me wrong. And we write about those in The Remnant. We have been for a long time. But at the moment, what's happening here is the best thing that could happen against these globalist freaks, and it's contagious. What's happening in Hungary, what's happening in Poland, what's happening even in the UK is sort of a spin-off of this, which is why the United Nations folks... World Health Organization, the Vatican, it's why they're so nervous. And at that protest, I'm going to close on this for sure, that protest last Sunday, I need to tell you this. I, 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 there was a strong, strong feeling, not only patriot, patriotic feeling, but a feeling that what made America great was her Christian people, her good, wholesome, solid Christian roots. You know what I mean? Despite the differences that we have, and we can talk about those all day long in a few years, but right now we need to unite all Americans who understand what's happening. And we're standing against what's happening. And at that protest last Sunday, I stood with thousands of what I would call asymptomatic traditionalists. They don't realize it yet. But they're up against the same enemy that we've been up for a long, against for a long time. They're standing against the same Christophobes that wrecked the Catholic Church. The same folks, the modernists, the secularists, the liberals, the atheists, the spreaders of the errors of Russia, as Our Lady of Fatima put it so, so perfectly and succinctly. See, traditional Catholics have been standing against these people forever. Now, lots of Americans, though they don't exactly know what that enemy is, they know it's wrong. These folks know something's wrong. And thanks now to this Orwellian lockdown of our country, when they look at these people, when they look at these forces that traditionalists have been fighting for a long time, you know what they see? <laughs> they see demons, just like we do. And that's the beginning, friends, of an alliance. Once you see the problem, there's going to be no stopping us from fighting against it and from driving it out of our country. <laughs> of course, if we add things like the truth and the rosary and devotion to Our Lady and the traditional Latin Mass and everything else that's core to true counter-revolution, suddenly, the point is, suddenly, we're not in this foxhole alone anymore. And that was a big mistake on their part. Pope Francis, the great globalist pope, has united so many, I'm going to say it, friends, millions of Catholics against what's happened to the Catholic Church. And if the Catholic Church wakes up, look out, Mr. Gates. Watch out. Watch your back, Mr. Soros. Because you guys, your people, your forefathers, <laughs> spent centuries trying to crush the Catholic Church. If she rises again, you are done. And it's not just traditional Catholics you know, these purveyors of the errors of Russia are trying to shut down right now. And we're going to go recruit them because they see it. It's football fans. It's baseball fans. It's evangelical Christians. It's millions and millions of pro-lifers and of homeschoolers, regular folks, Orthodox Christians, Orthodox Jews, regular Americans who've had enough and who are simply not going to take it anymore. And that's why I say there's reason for hope. Keep praying. Keep fighting. This is not over. The wheels are cut. This may have been a test, but now we know what they want. We know what their agenda is. This is not the end, friends. But we need to go on offense. We need to get off defense. Christians, patriots, baseball and apple pie Americans, come to the podium. Stand with us. Because we're all in the foxhole now together. We know what the enemy is. We know what we must do. We must resist him every day. Or they will take everything from us. Including our ability to worship God. As we must. So this is the moment, friends. This is the moment for us as traditional Catholics to push the kingship of Christ. Don't back away from it. What the world needs, what these protests need, is the kingship of Christ. So this is the moment to remind America that we need to definitely turn back to God. That those would-be tyrants have nothing if we stand together. And if we return to our Christian roots, they have nothing. They have no answer for this. At the moment, they have us in lockdown. But this moment will not be repeated. It's not going to happen again. And it will not last. It's falling apart right now. <laughs> so they think, they think they're coming for us. Mr. Soros, Mr. Gates, Pope Francis, you think you're coming for us. Do you know what? <laughs> you're wrong. This time, we are awake. 
Christian America is awake. And this time, we're ready for you. Please, God, come November, we're actually coming for you. I'm Michael Matt for Rendon TV. Keep the faith, keep praying your rosaries, and we'll see you next week.